Now they're being driven by this procedural, infinitely complex, trillion parameter neural network. Typically you have branching narratives, but now you've got this capacity to build procedural narratives. Parag Metal's platform lets game developers create stories that write themselves, powered by AI agents that never repeat the same experience twice. I imagine if Rockstar were on board, you know, like, what's the multi-agent expansion pack look like for Grand Theft Auto? We think the possibilities are really endless, and we're really excited to see what happens when you get multiple agents inside of an open world. From AI on the lot and VP land, this is Inside the AI Studio. Brock, so yeah, tell me about the Garden of the Machine. Sure. So we're a creative studio. We specialize in emerging technologies, machine learning, AI, and we've worked with artists and uh, institutions over the last 15 years to help them realize what's possible with machine learning. And what are you doing right now with agentic AI? Oh, what are we doing? That's oh, also man. a nice hot buzzword for the but year. How many buzzwords can yeah. we throw in? Uh, Multimodal? Multi-agent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, big data, I guess, is out of the window. But no, we've built a multi-agent authoring platform. And we actually uh, started a product called Emergentic AI. You can find out about it. It's emergentic.ai. And it allows you to author multiple agents that act uh, together. We first designed it for non-player characters, so you could power non-player characters inside of video games. But now they're being driven by this procedural, you know, infinitely complex trillion parameter neural network. And what's possible when you kind of have these procedural narratives? How do you design story for that? You now, typically you have branching narratives, but now you've got this capacity to build procedural narratives, bring in the player experience, help them onboard to a, a game, for instance, or bring in real-time internet feeds and somehow weave that into the story. So we think the possibilities are really endless and we're really excited to see what happens when you get multiple agents inside of an open world and now you've got emergent storytelling the interactions between them and the players so that stuff gets really exciting so this could potentially be multiple agents like ai agents characters oh, yeah. interacting with each other absolutely and then also interacting with players like real people yeah exactly like i imagine if rockstar were on board you know like what's the multi-agent expansion pack look like for grand theft audio uh, auto. <laughs> yeah, audio is actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like what they're going to call GTA 7 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years from now. Oh my God, let's hope not. <laughs> so, what is the process like? So, if you were a game developer, what's the process like working with Agentic AI to, I guess, both develop the parameters of the world and the story and then how the character would behave? Right. It's a great question. It's a very much an emerging practice, but it involves storytelling. So if you've got the normal tools of storytelling, you know how to design characters, plots, narratives, branching narratives, all the normal tools that game designers are used to, you'll be in good company. They'll feel familiar. Uh, but now you've got this iterative process where you're designing agentic characters. These characters are taking every single word that you craft into their system prompt and using that to act and feel like a person. We've gone through this a few times. Um, in one example, we built a historic simulation of the Mughal Empire, and we follow the story of Shah Jahan and his succession narrative. So we had a lot of really interesting characters in that narrative. If you're familiar with the story, there's uh, two brothers that are vying for, you know, the throne, so to speak, and every Mughal succession story is ripe with lots of violence. Um, so these are agents that can kill one another, they spread misinformation, um, they're trying to succeed the throne. And so they're doing everything under their tool belt to try and achieve that. So that was a really fun project to try and... and do you like either a bunch of historical documents to help train it? Or is it kind of well, that's data the that you thing, cleaned up yourself? You know, like we really don't need to feed them too much because that's already in these networks. They already know a lot. Um, probably a lot of copyrighted information <laughs> as well. <laughs> but we'll sweep that one under the rug for now. But I think... What's interesting is that you really don't have to give them too much when it's an existing character, when it's a historical character, at least. When it's, you know, a new character, then you kind of have to pull on like stylistic references and try and build the character's persona, fact stories, you know, motivations, intentions, desires, what are the conflict points, what's the resolution look like, building plot events over time. 
building that kind of dynamic story. That's all stuff that we built into our tool to try and help the storytellers. Then this is being built on top of like a uh, chat GPT for an the existing... underlying technology. Yeah. I mean, we're kind of um, model agnostic, so you can use open AI, you can use Google Gemini, you can use a okay. local model. Cause I was wondering more so in the sense of, have you found certain models to be better storytellers like i personally oh, yeah. found claude <laughs> to be pretty like better at creative writing and stuff in that realm so have you found yes models or better characters than other models they definitely all have their own personality which i think is a fun thing to play with as well and even like you know one of the artworks that we're working on now is trying to unpack the political biases in each model and kind of pit them against each other <laughs> <laughs> yeah this, uh, that's going to be a fun one. I'm curious about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Ministry of Truth. Is, uh, we'll see where that goes. What's been on your radar here at uh, AI on the Lot? Lots of stuff. Really excited by what's happening in the dojo, all the game stuff, like actually getting to meet people working with the tools and how they're thinking about it, what kind of roadblocks they have, what kind of workflows they've developed. Um, pretty excited by how people are engaging with it. Also really curious about how the pushback on the stuff will look like like what are people afraid of what conversations should we be having as a you know increased automation happens uh, things like that has there been any pushback like in the gaming world if a character is ai driven versus like decision trees or i'm less familiar with gaming so i don't know how there's exactly already a, built before yeah it's a great question and there's all i see a lot of ai already and built into games, I think, where the conversation steers when it becomes problematic is on whose data is this model trained? You know, is this somebody else's data? A AAA studio is going to be really hesitant to bring in a, a model that's been trained on copyrighted information. So it's really, a, you know, people working in terms of generative AI, they should, you know, build their own models, work with their own yeah. data sources. That's where the conversation should be going. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing because I know in the gen AI space studios are developing their own like safe gen AI models. I'm guessing there'd be something similar for character models or agentic 100%. models just trained yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a rock star database of exactly the GTA worlds and stuff. Yeah, these are things that big studios will have. They have lots of data from previous games, previous stories, and being able to simulate stories as well within games gives you a rich corpus to play with, and that's your own. Yeah. Any predictions or anything on your radar for like the next year or two? Multi agent. I okay. Th I think really what we've seen in the last year is this sort of single agent that tries to do everything, and it's devoid of personality. It's, it's, it's a chatbot assistant under the hood, and it'll always kind of feel like that. You know, like, how can I help you today? But how do you build personality into that? How do you specialize? That's where some of the creativity and personality comes through. Having your own crafted personality that knows you, that supports you through the things that matter to you versus this, you know, kind of generic solution crafted by Silicon Valley. So yeah, what would a multi-agent world look like? Is that like you can pick your chat bot that kind of works better for you or? You build your team, you know, like who do you want in your court, really? Who do you want on your side? Maybe it's um, a therapist that's modeled on a certain type of practice. Maybe it's somebody that can help you build 3D worlds in Blender. Maybe it's somebody that's your co-pilot when you're writing that knows about certain material and kind of is tailored to your experience. So more of like the specialist AI agent. Yeah, yeah. Less of this kind of, let's try and do everything and try to be everybody and more of, you know, personalities, basically. Cool. Where can people find out more information about you and your company? Emergentic.ai. Come check us out. Follow us. We're on Instagram as well, The Garden in the Machine. And um, you'll find us all over. Cool. Thanks, Brock. Thank Appreciate you. It.